Welcome to the No Limits Podcast, where limits do not exist, where you can create cash flow, equity, and real freedom with the power of real estate. Now, now, we will begin. Welcome to the dojo. The dojo. How to turn a small deal into a monster. That is the topic of today's show. This is Todd Toback, and welcome to the No Limits Real Estate Investing Podcast. If this is the first time that you've been listening to the show, head on over to No Limits Real Estate Investing.com and download the wholesaling map. This is the massive action plan, and this is going to teach you how to do your first or next wholesale deal if you're just starting out or if you're looking to build a team to a seven-figure or even an eight-figure enterprise, this is the map, the blueprint that's going to teach you how to do this. So today's show, we're going to talk about how to turn a regular deal into a monster. And so if you're listening to this podcast, you may be thinking, wow, I want to make money in real estate, or I want to be free, or I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it with who I want to do it with. This business will not identify you, does not identify me. It is a tool. It is a tool to give you freedom. So this podcast is all about providing cash flow, equity, and true freedom through the power of real estate. And that is the purpose of this podcast. Now, I can tell you that the purpose is not just to go around and do deals, as many deals as possible. I am not, when someone tells me they do a lot of deals, I'm not impressed. I want to know how much money are you making on your deals? How much net are you making on your deals? And I want to know how much time are you spending in your business? Are you carving out time to be free? That is really, really, really important. And so for me, I always say, if we can turn an ordinary deal into a monster, or we could structure a deal now to now give us some passive income, man, that's when this game starts to get fun. And so I'm going to share a deal that we did, real life case study that we negotiated yesterday. So this is like real time, baby, that is going to turn something ordinary, an ordinary fish into a giant fish. Nobody remembers the ordinary fish that you caught at the lake. Everybody remembers the monster. So we got a deal that we locked up yesterday. And the this is in South Florida. And a seller calls up and they want $110,000 for their property. So we looked it up. It's worth about one hundred and forty. dollars and this is a, um, a couple of manufactured homes on a huge lot, right? Now, these are actually on a permanent foundations, real nice manufactured home. So it's not like a trailer park. It is just real nice. So anyway, the seller calls and we're looking at it and we're thinking that, you know, to wholesale this to, for a cash deal, we're probably going to be able to sell it for 80, 85, you know, maybe $88,000. And so we were able to lock it up for $72,000. So if you would take that deal and we lock it up for 72 and we sell it for 85, right? That's $13,000. Now, if you subtract the marketing money, let's pretend like it cost you 2,000 or $2,500 to get a deal. You know, you're looking at, you know, I don't know, eleven, twelve thousand dollars your other overhead, you know, eight or nine thousand dollars. Now it's nothing to uh, sneeze at. It's nothing to poo-poo, but it's not going to be a game changing deal for you. And so I said, let's peel back the onion here. Let's slow this down. Let's turn this from ordinary into a monster. So that's what we're doing with this deal. So I looked at the deal our acquisition specialist and I said, okay, what is the seller O on this property? And just by asking that question, he goes, oh, well, he has and she has a private loan of $60,000. It's got a reasonable interest rate. I don't have that in front of me, but they owe about 60. We're buying it for 72. So we asked the seller, hey, Mr. Seller, um, can we just take over this loan, leave this in place and give you your 12K? And the seller says, Okay. <laughs> now, uh, this is not an episode about the due on sale clause and if we could take over a, a mortgage loan. Long story short, okay, you could pretty much take over payments on any mortgage loan without any repercussions. Now, of course, you want to talk to an attorney about that. And lenders do have the right 
most, if it's in the paperwork, to actually call a loan due, if that's the case. But the, the reality is most don't. Long story short, we have the right to now take over this loan of 60 grand. There's a loan in place for 60 grand. So to buy this house, we're going to pay the seller $72,000 in, in theory for the house, right? That's the total price, but they owe 60. So we're going to take over the mortgage of $60,000, which has a reasonable payment. And that is not important because it's minuscule compared to the rest of this deal. Now you can see that we only now need to come to the closing table with $12,000 plus closing costs. So we are going to go to the closing, right? Through a title company, get title insurance, do everything the right way, nice and tight, come to the table with $12,000 and then take over the $60,000 loan. Now we could go and we could fix up this property and we could try to rehab it and get retail for it for probably 145, 150, maybe maybe $155,000. But we said, you know what? We've got this great loan in place and we've got a much spread. So instead of wholesaling this, why don't we clean it up a little bit? We're going to paint it. And then what we're going to do is we are going to sell this on terms. We're going to sell this with owner financing. We are now going to be the bank. Okay, there is a reason why JP Morgan Chase, that family is extremely rich. And you see a Chase bank in almost every major city in the United States. And that's because they are the bank. They are using someone else's money to lend to you. Or oftentimes, they take your money and then lend it back to you. <laughs> so we are going to now be the bank. We're going to beat them at their own game or at least join them, copy them, emulate them. So we now control this property. We've got $12,000 in it. So we're going to put this on the multiple listing service. Uh, and we're also going to put it in Facebook marketplace. And we will say owner will finance. No bank qualifying. Down payment required. So what we're going to do now is sell this property to an owner occupant, someone who's going to live in the property and they don't have to qualify for a bank loan. We are going to require 10% down and we're going to sell this property for $175,000. So I'm going to require uh, 17,500 as a down payment to buy this property. Great property, great area two manufactured homes on a huge lot. Very, very, very desirable, right? They could live in one or two families or live in one or rent out the other. I don't care. Okay. But 17,500 and we're going to finance this property at six or 7% interest. Now notice the difference between what I paid from 72 to $175,000. That is $103,000. That gap is Huge. I was going to make ten, thirteen thousand dollars. Now we're going to make a hundred and three. But I'm not done yet because we're going to charge interest on this loan, right? So we're not going to collect all this money up front. We're going to collect a payment from the buyer, right? So this new payment, my best guess is, and again, this is just a ballpark, but this new payment is going to be somewhere around seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars a month for this new buyer who's going to live in the property. We're going to collect this every single month and the underlying payments on this. Remember, uh, I'm going to be collecting six or 7% interest on the equity that I create. So between that $60,000 that I got and now this new loan that I created with this buyer, right? That new buyer is going to pay 175 and I'm going to call it just uh, 17,000 even just for math, right? So 175 minus 17. So that's one, about $158,000. Okay. So I have $158,000 loan and they're going to be paying a six or 7% interest. I'm making money on the equity that I created out of thin air. In addition, though, the underlying loan on this, on the 60000 that I bought, the loan that I took over, is 5%. So now I'm going to be making 2% on the original seller's loan. So we got this private loan. We took over. That interest rate is 5 but now I'm going to charge that new buyer on something called a wraparound mortgage. I'm going to charge them on the full purchase price 7%. 
okay? Or six, depending on what the market will bear, we have to test it. But I'm gonna make money on the seller's original loan. And then I'm gonna make money on that new loan that I create. I'm gonna create a 30 year mortgage on this thing where the interest, okay, is going to be significant. And so every single month, I've created this giant payment that's going to be coming in every single month, 16, 17, 100 bucks a month. Now there is an underlying payment that needs to be made and that's going to be, you know, four or 500 bucks, but that's $1,000 cash flow. Here's the beauty. I am not a landlord in this situation. I do not have to make any repairs. I do not have to worry about insurance. Now the new buyer is going to have to worry about insurance and you do want to make sure that's there and that they pay for it. But now I am the bank. I don't have to worry about evictions. And because you got that large down payment of $17,000, $18,000, okay, you now should feel safe and secure. Obviously, the larger the down payment, the more secure you are and the less likely you'll have to take back that property. Now, there are some legal issues that you have to worry about called Frank Dodd. And if you are actually owner financing properties, you have to get a, a licensed uh, mortgage originator to handle that. But you're, I think you're allowed to do at least two a year without doing that. So if you're listening to this, you can do your first or second deal without being a loan officer. So this deal, we have not done one this year. So for this, boom, this one is in-house, baby. We don't have to worry about a loan officer handling that paperwork with the new buyer. If you're doing a ton of these is you can get a loan officer just to now handle the loan, okay? And just do the paperwork and originate that. Of course, you want to talk to an attorney about that. But again, all the Dodd-Frank rules and all that other stuff, if you can just get a licensed mortgage officer, someone who's allowed to do that, okay, they can handle it and handle all the paperwork. And actually it's easier because they can handle all the loan paperwork and you don't have to worry about it. So you can pay them maybe a point, 1700, 1800 bucks to do that paperwork for you. Now I want you to look at the shift here. In one standpoint, you would have made $12,000, $13,000 and in the other scenario, right, you're making over $100,000 in principle, but there is going to be thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in interest, interest paid. If this deal goes over 30 years, we will make at least another $100,000 in interest payments, at least. All right, there's some calculators that you can do. By the way, a nice little tool that you can download on your iPhone, if you have it, it's called Easy Calculator. It's free and it's an app on iPhone. I'm not sure if it's on Android, but go on apps and just search for Easy Calculator. And this will enable you to calculate loan payments and the interest paid. And I can tell you that once you start messing around the numbers and you learn how to be the bank, you're gonna start to see a shift. And so a lot of my private clients, I teach them how to do these deals, monster deals. If they're wholesaling, I teach them how to build a team and then how to do monster wholesale deals. And then some of these pocket deals like these where you take ordinary deals and just turn them into absolute monsters. But this is real wealth building stuff right here. This is the stuff that's going to move the needle and say, wow, I really, really built up my net worth. So if you uh, feel like you would qualify to be a private client, you can go to nolimitsrealestateinvesting.com forward slash private. And again, you've got to be doing deals and you've got to qualify. But otherwise... My challenge to you again is to take an ordinary deal and then turn it into a monster. No one remembers the small or the medium fish, right? Go for the monster. Of course, you want that consistency. So you want to be doing deals day in and day out. But if you've got the shot, take it. So just a reminder, go to nolimitsrealestateinvesting.com, download the map, and share this content with your friends, family, colleagues, real estate buddies, whoever else needs to hear it. And I see your reviews on iTunes. Really, really appreciate that. I can't wait to talk to you on the next show.